Hey everybody, welcome back to another After Effects CS6 tutorial. I'm your host, Buddy Blackford, and today I want to go over spotlights with you. And let's just bring in a spotlight here. We'll go up to the layer, we'll go to new light. And the hotkeys for the for uh, some of these lights is uh, Control Alt Shift L or Command Option Shift L. But I mean, I don't really like pushing all those buttons at once. I find it faster to just come up here and click and uh, bring in a light. And then if I ever need any more lights, I'll just dupl duplicate this light and then change the settings. So I'm going to name this a Spotlight. And we're going to change it to Spot here. Now we've got some settings going on here. I'm going to create the light first. And... Um, we need it, I want it to illuminate this layer of this uh, guy standing around. So I'm going to need to change some of the setting that's settings that are on here. Now the last settings that you use are going to be the next default settings for your spotlight. So the last time I used it, I had an, I had an intensity of 2. So I'm going to turn that up so you can see what the hell's going on. And uh, we've got our spotlight here. I'm going to put that at 100. <clears throat> Oop, don't hit enter because then it'll uh, go right back down like I just hit enter. So I've got me at my intensity at 100 and if you click on this checkbox here where it says preview you can see what's, what you're doing in uh, real time there. You can change the co color of your spotlight to create different types of moods. So now if I look at this, um, now there's a different type of mood going on here in this uh, picture. Um, I can change my cone angle to uh, change the width of the uh, spotlight and how much it's illuminating. So if I put this up to maybe like 90, it's going to illuminate a bigger uh, area there. Now the feather here is going to determine like the outside here how it's uh, feathering out of the, of the uh, cone. So if I turn that to 100, it's going to be a lot more feathered in. If I turn it to zero, it's not going to be feathered at all. It's just going to be a straight hard circle, which um, might be cool at some times, but most of the time you're going to want to have a certain amount of feather. I'll put that on 50. The fall off here is going to affect how uh, the light feathers out or how the light um, diffuses out at the uh, edges of your uh, lighting here. So if I turn this fall off on to smooth or inverse square clamped, these are both just different types and they just give you different um, different looks. You don't need to know what they mean. Just uh, here's smooth and if you I'll, uh, I'll hit OK real quick and I'll just bring this into a one camera view so we can see and zoom it in <clears throat> and bring up my light options again so we can see a little better so this is none and if you look at the edges you can see it gets darker when I go into smooth and then if I go to inverse square clamped it gets even more darker so that's just what you need to really know and when you have the uh, smooth here you can increase the radius or, or the fall off distance so if I you can also decrease it also obviously if I decrease this to uh, like 200 you can see that it gets darker and if I increase it it's obviously gonna get uh, a lot br uh, brighter the uh, fall off of how the light falls off the edges is being affected by this radius here and the distance is uh, the same thing so if I put the distance down I'll use my shift here. You can see what's going on here. So that's the uh, radius of your fall off, or the distance of your fall off from the uh, um, from the cone angle there. And then if I go past, it just comes out a little farther. And the lights don't go past the cone angle; they'll just go to the edge there. So if I type this on really high, I typed it on 5,400, it's not going any farther than the edges here. So I'll just back, go back to the basic 500, and I'll just turn the fall off down. K 
casting shadows here is if you have another object in front and that object accepts and the object accepts shadows you can cast shadows on the object this one doesn't have anywhere to uh, have anything to cast a shadow on or anything like that so I can't show this um, right now but I can bring up some text and show you how that works so I'm gonna hit OK here and we're gonna bring in some text so I'll just go or actually I can bring in these uh, vector images that I actually have let's see if one's in front all right we got that one let's bring in this black black one here and I have to check in 3d space where it is all right it's in front of the light I'm gonna rotate or put it back to zero rotation here and move it just back a little bit <clears throat> now this ha uh, this vector has transparency so the light will penetrate through the transparency here and cast a shadow onto the back object. So the first thing I need to do is come down to this uh, picture here that I have in the background and allow it to accept shadows by twirling down and coming to the material options and um, cast shadows is on. The vector that I have needs to have cast shadows on also. Accept shadows on, okay, accept lights on, okay. And make sure I have everything right on this one again. Accept shadows on, accept lights on. So we turn that stuff on and make our light now cast shadows. And there we go. Now we have a shadow going on here. I can turn the shadow darkness down a little bit and as you see when you start casting shadows it <clears throat> renders a lot slower so if I uncheck cast, shadow, cast shadows you should be able to see like the shadows in the background turning off there you go so that's how you cast shadows and it's got this little note down here in case you forget that shadows are only cast from layers with cast shadows enabled to layers with cast except shadows. Now all those options can be found again under the uh, light options here. So if, if you twirl down on the spotlight and then come down to your light options you've got all those options again. So th these are all the same ones that you can find in the um, in the pop-up menu when you double click it was just it's easier for me to show you on this screen because the words are bigger and you can see uh, a little better so just uh, remember that that's it for spotlights we can now use those in our scenes mess around with them if you would like um, rotate them around animate them and uh, that's pretty much all there is so I'll Thank you. Yeah, thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, everybody.